Hey everybody, this is Rishi, and in this video we're going to be talking about central lines. And I'm going to talk about how to identify the position on chest x-ray, and we're going to talk about a couple of complications that you can see on chest x-ray. We need to first start out with the anatomy, and so I have a chest x-ray here, and I've drawn in a diagram of the major vessels that you need to know. So let's just go through and label these vessels. First at the top we have the internal jugular veins, the right and left. The internal jugular veins join with the right and left subclavian veins to form the right and left brachiocephalic veins. The right and left brachiocephalic veins join together to form the SVC. When a patient gets a new central line, I generally dictate the side and the vessel that's accessed in order to identify that central line. So I might say there's a new right IJ central line with a tip in the lower SVC. There are some important landmarks that I want to identify on this chest x-ray. The first is the clavicles. So the clavicles are right here, and notice that the subclavian veins lie just beneath the clavicles. That's number one. The second anatomic landmark is the aortic arch. So the top of the aortic arch will be approximately where the left brachiocephalic vein comes in. And notice that the left brachiocephalic vein slopes in from left to right and it goes inferiorly in that direction, okay? So in some patients, the left brachiocephalic vein will be just above the arch. Sometimes it's at the level of the top of the arch. Sometimes it's just below. There's some variation there, but it's approximately at the level of the aortic arch. The third landmark that I want you to notice is the first intercostal space. So if we extend the bottom of the first rib towards the mediastinum and the top of the second rib towards the mediastinum, that's the first intercostal space. And that is approximately where the top of the SVC is. It's where the right and left brachiocephalic veins join to form the SVC. And then the final landmark I want you to be aware of is the SVC right atrial junction. So the right side of the SVC is a straight line along the right side of the mediastinum. Where that starts to flare out is where the right atrium starts. So this angle right here is the SVC right atrial junction. I want to point out a couple other landmarks, but I need to get rid of this overlay first. Okay, so one of the landmarks is right here, and it's this oval structure. This is the azagous vein. The azagous vein is located at the right tracheobronchial angle, so it's basically where the right main bronchus comes off of the trachea. That's where the azagous vein lives, and it's where it hooks in into the SVC. And then the final landmark is the bottom border of the bronchus intermedius. So where that crosses the right side of the mediastinum is approximately the level of the SVC right atrial junction. Now in this case, it's a little bit higher than the actual junction, but it's going to be an approximate landmark for you to identify. Okay, next we're going to be talking about types of catheters, and I'm going to show you some normal examples. There's a number of different ways to categorize central lines, but one of the main ways is to first determine whether it's peripherally inserted or centrally inserted. Centrally inserted catheters usually go in either the internal jugular vein or the subclavian vein. They can also be inserted in veins in the inguinal region, but since we're only talking about chest x-rays, I'm going to ignore that for this lecture. Peripherally inserted catheters go in veins in the arm, but the tip of the catheter end up in the SVC. So in this case, we can see that there's a central line coming in from the arm. So we know that this is a right pick, and the tip of the catheter is right here. So in this case, this is a patient from the ICU, so there's a lot of things going on. But first of all, you could see that there's a slight inflection point in the right side of the mediastinum, and that is approximately where the superior cavoatrial junction is. So I would say that this is in good position. The other landmark that we have here is if you follow the bottom of the bronchus intermedius out, then where that intersects the mediastinum 
is approximately where the cavoatrial junction is. So here we have two landmarks that tell us that this pick is in good position. As opposed to the peripherally inserted catheter or pick, there's central venous catheters or centrally inserted catheters. And this is an example of one of them. So you could see that there's a line right here, but it ends right there. Okay, so this is a central line that is inserted in the right subclavian vein. And remember we said that the subclavian vein is just beneath the clavicle. And again, when we look at the tip of the catheter, we can use our landmarks and identify the SVC. And then the inflection point where that starts to flare out is the right atrium. So this, the tip of this catheter is just below the superior cavoatrial junction in the right atrium. So this catheter could be pulled back a centimeter or two to be an ideal position. It's important to remember that the tip of the catheter is not static. And as the patient breathes and the diaphragm goes up and down, the heart will also go up and down. And so in this patient, they took a pretty good inspiration. And I would imagine that if they had lower lung volumes, that the tip of the catheter would go even deeper into the right atrium. Another common type of central line are called tunneled catheters. And these are similar to directly inserted central catheters like the subclavian line I just showed you. But what's different about them is that the hub of the catheter is at some distance from the vein that's accessed. So in this case, this is a right IJ central line. The hub is down here, and this whole portion from here to here is tunneled underneath the skin before it enters the vein. And we can see that there's a cuff right here to help hold it in place. Now, if we were to evaluate the position of this catheter and use our landmarks, you could see that here's the SVC right here, and it starts to flare out about right there. And so this is the superior cavoatrial junction, and so this is in good position. Let's take a look at this patient. This patient has two catheters, one on the right and the other on the left. The one on the right is a special type of tunneled catheter in which the end of the catheter terminates in a port. So rather than being exposed to the skin, this is underneath the skin and it's usually for chemotherapy. So this I would call a chest port. And if we look at the tip of this catheter, it looks like it's right at the superior cavoatrial junction right there. So this is in good position. But let's take a look at the left. So this is a tunneled catheter as well. In this case, it's not a port. The hub of the catheter is exposed to the atmosphere here. But where's the tip going? So we can see that the tip of the catheter doesn't follow the normal course of the subclavian and brachiocephalic vein, which would be this way. Instead, it goes straight down on the left side of the mediastinum. This is an anatomic variant called a duplicated left SVC. Most of the time, these drain to the right atrium via the coronary sinus. But if I place this catheter and I didn't have any prior imaging on the patient, it would be good to confirm this by getting either cross-sectional imaging or checking the blood gas to make sure that it's venous and not in an artery. Now let's take a look at some malpositioned catheters. Here's a tunneled right IJ central line. And if we use our first intercostal space as our landmark in this example, you can see that it's a bit too high. This is probably at the origin of the SVC. And the reason why that's not ideal is because a study has shown that if a catheter is placed in the upper SVC, there's a higher chance of catheter thrombosis compared to if it's in the lower SVC. So this one is not in ideal position. Here's another left IJ central line and the catheter tip is down here. And if we were to use our landmarks, then the superior cavoatrial junction is somewhere about right here. And so this is deep into the right atrium. It's actually in the lower part of the right atrium. 
These are not ideal because there's a higher chance of having arrhythmias if the catheter is positioned in the right atrium. And here it is after replacement. So you could see now that the tip of the catheter is right there, probably right at the superior cavoatrial junction, which I would put approximately right there. Here's a chest x-ray, but I've zoomed in in the lung apices. And there's two catheters here. Both of them are supposed to be subclavian central lines. One of them ends right here. So this, the left-sided catheter here, terminates high in the mediastinum. So that's probably in the upper SVC. Now on the left side, what you'll notice is that this catheter crosses above the right clavicle. And then instead of descending in the right side of the mediastinum here, it kind of goes towards the middle of the mediastinum. This is an example of an arterially placed catheter. So this catheter was placed in the subclavian artery and the tip of the catheter is probably in the right brachiocephalic vein, if not in the aortic arch. So our clues in this case are that the catheter goes above the right clavicle and it terminates towards the midline rather than in the right side of the mediastinum. Let me show you one other example of an arterial placement. So in this patient, there's a lot of EKG wires that overlie the chest, but you could see that there's a central line here and this does not go to the right side of the mediastinum into the SVC here. Instead, it goes more towards the midline and the tip of the catheter is right here. So this again is another arterially placed catheter. I showed you that case earlier of a left-sided SVC. The reason why this is different is because it descends in the middle of the mediastinum rather than on the left side of the mediastinum, which is what a left-sided SVC will do. Now what's going on in this case? So this patient has a left pick and you can see that it's going where it's supposed to. It's crossing the midline into the SVC. But instead of going straight down, it makes a little curve at its tip. And this curve is an indication that it's in the azagous vein. Okay, a normal central line will not have that curve at the tip. It should be straight, vertically oriented, in line with the SVC. So if you see that curve, you should be suspicious that it's in the azagous vein. The other clue is that it terminates right at the right tracheobronchial angle. And as I said before, that's where the azagous vein lives. And so this is in the azagous vein. These have to be repositioned because the azagous vein is not a large vein. So there's a risk of vessel injury or thrombosis. This is another example of a commonly malpositioned line. Sometimes picks, rather than going into the mediastinum, they get caught up and coiled in the subclavian region. And so that's what's happening here. So this one is coiled in the right subclavian region with the tip of the catheter right here. So this needs to be repositioned. This is another common malpositioned line you'll see. So we have another pick, this time from the left side, and rather than going caudally in the SVC, it goes up. So this one is going up into the right brachiocephalic vein and the right internal jugular vein, and it needs to be repositioned. Now, in addition to checking the position of the catheter, one of the main reasons for obtaining a chest X-ray after central line placement is to make sure that there are no other complications. And this patient who was intubated got a left subclavian central line. And you can see after central line placement that a left pneumothorax developed. The tip of the central line is high in the SVC also. Catheters that are placed by the subclavian approach are 10 to 20 times more likely to cause a pneumothorax than by the IJ approach. In addition to a malpositioned line and a pneumothorax, one other complication that you can see on an immediate chest x-ray is bleeding. And the bleeding can be in the mediastinum or it can be in the pleural space. If it's in the subcutaneous tissues, it's gonna be harder to detect unless there's some displacement of a normal structure like the trachea. 
So new mediastinal widening or a new pleural effusion on the same side of a central line placement should make you suspicious of a bleeding complication. All right, so that's all I have for you today. If you have any questions about this video, please leave a comment below. Thanks.